establishing battlefield control. Stand by. Reinforcements have arrived. New construction options. Battle controls established. Twisted Insurrection is a standalone fan game set in the Command and Conquer universe. You can download and play it for free, link in the description. The project was founded in November 2007. Last update was in September 2019. That's an impressive commitment. Chronologically, the story takes place between the events of the original game and its sequel, Tiberian Sun. But Twisted Insurrection changes a few things. More than a few, actually. This is a truly antediluvian project. The fans, unpaid enthusiasts, volunteers have spent more time working with Tiberian Sun as a medium than the original developers did. Projects similar to this one are obviously very rare, although I can name a few. Tamriel Rebuilt for Morrowind, Blue Planet for Free Space 2, Nevada and Sonora for Fallout 2. The craftsmanship that went into these fan games is so impressive that you can repackage and sell them with the official branding and most consumers won't be able to tell the difference. They are usually made using old technology, revealing their advanced age, and yet these are some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. Looking at screenshots and watching gameplay videos, I developed similarly high hopes for Twisted Insurrection. Was I disappointed? Well. Well, the game's good, but it does have, uh, I would say, a weak start. One annoying problem that I want to address straight away is that TI relies too much on missions where you control a limited number of units without a base. All introductory levels are like this, and they're all terrible. At this point, this is tradition. Command and Conquer games always had levels like this, and I've always hated them. Take away the base, take away the economic dimension, and the player's decision-making suddenly loses a lot of its depth. I think it was Sid Meier who said that a video game is a set of interesting decisions. So when playing through these earlier levels, I was getting a little worried. Oh no, am I gonna end up hating this? To give you an idea, the first GDI level with a construction yard is Mission 3, and you have to play most of it without a base anyway. But yes, it does get better. Some of the early content can be a chore, but what comes later is exciting enough that every day I woke up I couldn't wait to get to my laptop and fire up the game again. Let's talk about the story. Here is a quick refresher. Command and Conquer series is about a global war between a NATO-like organization called the GDI and militaristic evil cult the Brotherhood of Nod. The factions fight over control of the green extraterrestrial mineral called Tiberium. A comet brought Tiberium to Earth and now that stuff is everywhere. And initially it seems to be a good thing, because Tiberium turned out to be useful in both energy production and heavy industry. No resource shortages with this thing around. The developers at Westwood practiced what I call Warcraft 1 approach to storytelling, meaning they didn't have a plan, just sort of made things up as they went along. Nod, for example, never had a coherent ideology, a belief system or even a military doctrine. Things would get more fleshed out in the sequel, Tiberian Sun, where the Brotherhood is transformed into a fascist transhumanist organization. We but again, they don't display much in a way of coherent ideology or goals. Nod is like the First Order from Star Wars in a sense that they are excited by abstract idea of fascism, but they don't have specific governance-related ambitions. So in the canonical story, the GDI eventually defeats Nod. The cult's main temple compound in Sarajevo is destroyed by an ion cannon, a GDI high-tech orbital superweapon. Nod leader Kane is presumed dead. The Brotherhood fractures into a civil war. This is where the events of Tiberian Sun begin. But the non-canon Nod ending is way more fun. See, the Brotherhood were never as conventionally strong as the GDI. Their tanks were not as tough, their air power not as deadly. Instead, their influence came from manipulating the media, as well as using advanced technology like cloaking and high-powered lasers. 
So what happens in the Nod ending is that the Brotherhood assembles a team of 80s cyberspace hackers in order to infiltrate the GDI ion cannon uplink. RIP Welcome to the Global Defense Initiative Orbital Defense Matrix. Eventually, the hackers succeed. The Brotherhood takes control of the orbital weapon. The player gets to choose which culturally important landmark to strike. I imagine almost everyone chooses the White House. Well, shit! NATO just vaporized President Trumo with a space laser. I guess he was right not to trust them. And this is where the alternative timeline of Twisted Insurrection starts. The world, the UN, is convinced that the GDI went rogue. The organization is discredited, losing whatever financial and political support they had. Blowing up the White House will do that. The planet is transitioning from pre-apocalyptic to post-apocalyptic state. Nod is victorious. Oh, how the tables have turned! It's even suggested that pro-GDI elements have to resort to terrorism. They are that powerless. The GDI campaign is about rebuilding and seeking allies. The Nod campaign is about crushing whatever left of their opponents and dealing with issues of internal stability. Twisted Insurrection has two secondary factions, or like the game calls them, tech factions. The Forsaken, the mutant army, makes a return from the original Tip Sun. Joining them is a brand new side of the conflict, a cynical high-tech corporation creatively named Globotech. Establishing battlefield control. Stand by. What Globotech is supposed to be is a unity of the world's most powerful international corporations. It is as if Amazon, Team Sweeney, Tencent, Lockheed Martin, and Vladimir Putin's Gazprom joined forces in order to survive and thrive after the ecological apocalypse. In the story, the corporation acts as a kingmaker, selling its products to whatever faction needs them the most at the time. They are like the Casino Planet people from The Last Jedi. Globotech has unique units, many of which seem to be excessively gimmicky. They're kind of more akin to units from the Red Alert series. Some of the voice acting seems to be borrowed from Yuri's Revenge, which is fine. You don't play as Globotech directly, but they're heavily involved in single-player campaigns, so you'll be seeing the units a lot. The wiki page for the mod tells me Twisted Insurrection is critically acclaimed, but it's hard to find any mention of the project outside of mod DB. There is this PC Gamer article, a wiki that is hopelessly out of date, and a surprisingly helpful and still regularly updated Russian fan community page on their Facebook equivalent. It's almost impossible to find any in-depth discussions about the mod outside of the official forums, and these seem to be abandoned. Well, this sucks. TI is the biggest and possibly the best Tiberian Sun mod out there, and it seems we'll never see the game reach version 1.0. But I suppose it's not that big of a deal. There are a few bugs here and there, but the experience doesn't feel unfinished or unpolished. After all, it was in development for how long? We should uh, have a conversation about ecology. Tiberian Sun had a unique vision of how post-apocalyptic world can look like. See, when you think about post-apocalypse, the first thing that pops into your head is probably something like Fallout. Abandoned buildings, ruins full of technological artifacts from the olden times, endless brown deserts, so on. And all of this wrapped in the theme that war is bad. An important message, but uh, a truism. Tib Sun is strikingly different. First of all, its catastrophe is ecological in nature. Tiberium grew out of control, devouring and transforming the planet. First its flora, then its fauna. The crystal is poisonous to humans and animals. There is plenty of desertification going on, but Tib Sun deserts are not brown. The landscapes bask in green and blue glow of extraterrestrial crystals. The technology industry thrives. For them, it's one breakthrough after another. The cities and towns still support high quality of life. For them, it's only a matter of time. The clock is ticking. Even the music is slower and more calm compared to the previous game. There is a quiet melancholy in all this. 
the planet is dying by falling asleep. So in terms of the overall style, Tiberian Sun is intriguing. But specifically the visual presentation can be a mess at times. And TI inherits many of the old issues. The units, especially larger ones, tend to visually merge into one another. Plus the game tends to provide you with way too many units at the same time. Blobs are just annoying to manage. The AI doesn't really do formations. And the overall chaos is multiplied by the default game speed being a little too quick. That's probably the reason why Westwood added target lines. They look ugly, but at least with them you can tell what is moving where and what's happening on the screen. Things get even more messy once you get to maps with new ground textures added in TI. At least I think these are new. The units, both sprite and voxel based, are hard to distinguish from terrain on certain maps. And yet another thing contributing to the overall mess is the way vehicles are colored. Nod units tend to have too many grey and black elements, while the GDI ones are too brown. The details of the model can be hard to distinguish. It can be hard to tell what the unit is even supposed to look like. Half of them just resemble collections of blocks. This was a problem in OG Tibsan, and it's definitely a problem in Twisted Insurrection. Now take all that, units merging into one another, the issue with ground textures and irrational color schemes, and zoom out a bunch so there is even more of this stuff on screen at the same time. It makes my head hurt. This is why the game should be played in lowish resolutions. Overall, I'd describe the aesthetic as disharmonious. You will almost certainly need to tweak the game's options a bunch before TI becomes really playable. The default settings are for those who were playing Command & Conquer since it was released without ever really stopping. Due to the exposure to Tiberium radiation, over time they changed, adapted, mastered the chaos. I imagine this is how these people look like. Another gameplay-related problem is that in Tiberian Sun, units tend to have a very small vision radius around them. You always end up rolling straight into ambushes and AI static defenses. Considering that units in the game deal quite a bit of damage, the process of exploring the map becomes an exercise of saving and reloading, especially in missions with a limited number of units. It can feel like the game is randomly punishing you for no reason. There is also an issue with weird punctuation in text-based briefings. I don't like to make fun of people for this sort of thing since I myself have a slight dyslexia, but come on, this is an old mod, this should have been fixed ages ago. The writing itself is minimalist and fine. And of course, the series is famous for its cringe-inducing full-motion videos. Chandra, you son of a bitch. Twisted Insurrection actually does have FMVs, believe it or not. These are very simple and abstract, which is understandable. Okay, so where is this going? Is this one of them bubbly Tiberian life forms assembling itself? Oh, it's a nod thing. The game makes extensive use of in engine cutscenes in order to tell its story, and these are fine, short, and sweet. Although it is a little weird to play as an actual empowered terrorist organization that bombs hospitals. Mission accomplished. CNC never really addressed why people even join Nod when they do shit like this pretty openly. If you believe your propaganda, you won't believe this. But the Brotherhood is only interested in peace. Let's talk about campaigns. It's like this. Most of the game's single-player content is contained in two main campaigns. GDI and Nod both get 16 missions each. Pretty generous. In addition, there are standalone levels as well as two bonus mini-campaigns, recreating the events of the first game in Tibsan Engine with Twisted Insurrection units and additions. Technology in the Command & Conquer universe was always inconsistent. The original war was fought with Abrams tanks, Bradleys and A-10s. In the sequel we have force fields, cyborgs, a rogue AI, bipedal mechs and flying ships. That's quite a leap. To make things even more weird, Tiberian Sun Tech was intentionally made to look kind of dated. 
similar to the way Star Wars did it. It gave an impression the war has been going on for a long time and that the tech has been around for a while. It's almost, I wanna say, magical realism. Twisted Insurrection bridges the gap between the two games. We start with Bradleys, Humvees and M113 APCs. In the third NOD mission we're beginning to see transitional technologies. The GDI forces are a mix of Abrams tanks and primitive walker robots. NOD get their first Tibson style gimmicky tank that can double as an APC. At least that's what I think it does. In the subsequent mission we get anti-infantry laser mechs. In early levels NOD tanks are airlifted to you like they were in Tiberian Dawn. But in later missions, the airlift mechanics is replaced by a conventional factory, like in Tib Sun. Tiberium harvesters also go through the process of modernization. In one level you have classic beetle-like machines, but in the next they are replaced by more advanced-looking vehicles. So that's cool. Things are moving forward, but the technology from the first war is still used extensively. The Tiberian Dawn campaigns are not remakes. They are not supposed to be. The missions end up playing very differently. The AI, unit stats, maps, everything is a little different. For comparison, this is how GDI Mission 1 looks in the original. And this is how it looks in EA sanctioned remake released earlier this year. And this is how it looks in Twisted Insurrection. Honestly, I like all three. What's up, Nikumba? The retro campaigns play a little bit slower than the TI main ones, and by that point I got used to their fast pace. But there is more to this mod than the single-player content. Or not? Well, that's unfortunate. I wonder if people still play Red Alert 2 multiplayer. Fond memories of that one. There is one standalone mission where you can play as the United States. Hmm, that's interesting, let's try it out. The following message is transmitted at the request of Dr. Ron Paul. What? It's happening. Building I could have saved you. I tried to warn you. Training. So the civilians attack Area 51 in endless human waves. We are well equipped to deal with them, except sometimes the civilians would deploy killdozers, artillery and even subterranean units. You need to use your fleet of A-10s and Apaches to deal with those. During the carnage, the synthesized voice regurgitates old Doom Paul memes. These are from a more innocent time. If the civilians manage to capture Harp, we get annihilated by a lightning storm. If they capture the Chronosphere, we'll be devoured by time-traveling Tiberian dinosaurs from the future. A challenging level and quite excellent too. Let's talk about some technical stuff real quick. There are things you need to do in order to make the game comfortable to play, and I've already mentioned some of them. Older RTS games sometimes allowed the player to adjust game speed. They all had this functionality. If you haven't played Tiberian Sun or Twisted Insurrection before, or for a while, I recommend lowering game speed a little. Not too much, otherwise it will feel like you are playing in slow motion. Some games, like StarCraft, feel best when they are played on fastest. But Tiberian Sun just looks stupid. Unrealistically quick unit movements clash with the tone of the game, which is post-apocalyptic and melancholic. Another important thing to note is that you probably don't want to play Twisted Insurrection on hard. You might have considered starting on hard because you've been playing these games for decades and the early missions are reasonable in their difficulty. The thing is, in TI, hard just means that the AI gets unlimited resources and an ability to construct units at near instant rates. In later missions you can accidentally stumble upon a trigger that will push the AI into a berserk state, swarming you with an infinite amount of units. At that point you have no chance. So yeah, play on normal. I promise it's challenging enough. And one last thing. On some systems the game will seemingly freeze after using the save feature. 
Don't worry, it didn't crash and it's not actually frozen. Alt tabbing to desktop and back will fix it. The problem is with the renderer. Some renderers just don't agree with some systems. The FAQ on ModDB recommends selecting one of these if you are experiencing problems. At least your mother tipped well. I guess this review won't be complete without mentioning the soundtrack. The music is good. There are some original tracks, some Command and Conquer classics reimagined, as well as two bonus tracks remixed by Frank Klepacki, the composer for the original series as well as Red Alert. Yeah, these dudes got Klepacki on board somehow, that's cool. The new music is more aggressive compared to the Tip Sun originals, but it does make sense. The game itself is faster, more aggressive and the battles are larger in scope. Twisted Insurrection is a great free fan game. If you like RTSs and Command and & Conquer, you should definitely check it out. And it is completely free, you don't need to buy anything in order to play it. The ownership of old games is not required. It doesn't even have an installer, you just unzip the archive and fire up the executable. The fans should be grateful to the developer team for keeping the series alive. It's one of the largest and most ambitious CNC mods out there. I believe the only project that can challenge its scope and quality is Mental Omega for Red Alert 2. Maybe we'll check that one out later. Sir, it's an honor to have you back. Traitor. Kane has been loath to attack America. But I feel that it's time, and that you're the one to do it. This is the Pentagon. A full frontal attack with your strongest forces should render their military center of operation. Now, do it again in French and German. I want 300 copies made and sent to every TV station in Europe. We have the satellite for another 10 minutes. Is that camera still running?